Tonight on The Local Life, flash floods hit the community again on Tuesday. In the spotlight, learn about the Larchmont Art Festival feature artist. Mamaroneck Town in Larchmont celebrate a year of composting. And Rob Moretti dives into the LMC Varsity Sports Program on this week's roundtable. Good evening, it's Thursday, September 27. I'm Sebastian Hall, and welcome to The Local Life. Flash flooding hit the Mamaroneck Village on Tuesday. The weather didn't stop meetings of the school board and Mamaroneck Village board, but the floods did some damage in the area, including the home of Mamaroneck clerk treasurer Agustino Fusco. Assistant Village Manager Daniel Sarnoff said those who sign up for the emergency notification system received alerts of the flooding and stressed the importance of residents and business owners of doing so if they have not already. Visit the Village website on your screen now to sign up for SWIFT 911 notification alerts and for more information. The Mamaroneck School Board will be voting in November on a proposed $54 million bond referendum to shore up infrastructure and support district teaching initiatives. Tuesday was the first of several community meetings to educate the public. Bringing all six district buildings into compliance with ADA rules is one of the goal of the capital program. The buildings are between 50 and 116 years old. Creating spaces for new programs is another goal, with a proposal to develop a commercial grade lab at the High School for Culinary Arts. We worked with uh, Chef Luff um, and the administration at the high school and um, kind of went over what his wish list would be for expanding the culinary arts program here at the, at the high school. Um, this plan has six student workstations as well as a demonstration um, station. This is all uh, commercial grade equipment that they would see in, in, the actual, uh, in the actual field. It also includes a multi-purpose uh, room that can be used as a classroom, but also as a cafe in off hours. There's a lot of windows between the two, the two spaces, so it really showcases what they're doing in the lab. Um, the two photos that are there are actually one to, uh, a project that we just finished at Leonia High School. This is becoming a, a, a bigger thing throughout many districts, and it's really it's getting a lot of students interested in the culinary arts. On Thursday, October 11, at Hummocks Middle School at 7 p.m., the board will hold a community conversation on emerging educational design, such as the proposed culinary arts lab. Further information on the proposed bond will take place at the next school board meeting on Tuesday, October 2nd. Remember, you can watch full school board meetings from both Mamaroneck and Reinick by visiting lmctv.org slash videos. The county's B-Line bus fleet is adding 78 diesel-electric buses, according to an announcement from Westchester County Executive George Latimer. The buses will save the county 850,000 gallons less of fuel and eliminating more than 12,000 tons of greenhouse gas emissions. So not only are we saving money, but we're celebrating sustainable transportation and doing our best to help protect the environment. These buses are equipped to operate to up to one mile on battery power alone and have start-stop technology known as depot mode that automatically shuts down and restarts the combustion uh, the internal combustion engine while the buses are idling, which reduces fuel consumption. Each seat has its own USB charging port, and in this day of technology, we're always looking for a place to charge up. You now have that capacity on this bus, and uh, we're all going to take a ride on one of these buses so you can feel the difference in the ride, which is important to those of us who, who ride buses. As someone who is a bus person from Yonkers who knows how essential it is for so many people this is the only means of transit for thousands of Westchester residents. We are so, so pleased to have these environmentally smart, uh, very nice looking with bike 
opportunity and chargers. Uh, this is a huge development. So thank you, Mr. County Executive. Thank you to all who are part of it. And uh, let's keep our commitment to bus transportation. Thank you. The B-Line system is the second largest transit bus fleet in New York State, and the hybrid buses will be fully integrated into Westchester County by mid-2019. Some good news from Save the Sound. The nonprofit organization released its 2018 Long Island Sound report card this week. Eastern Narrows, the region including the coast of Westchester County, showed the most improved water quality in a decade. The region's water has benefited from state and federal improvements to sewage treatment facilities that reduce the discharge of nitrogen into the sound, leading to higher levels of dissolved oxygen and support for marine life. However, Save the Sound warns that individual beaches and bays still face challenges with climate change and population growth, bringing the need for more investment across the board. To view the report, visit www.savethesound.org. And now, Stephen Estes will discuss with Rod Moretti the LMC Varsity Sports Program in tonight's roundtable. Welcome back. I'm Steve Anastas, and with me is the Varsity Sports Producer for LMC TV Sports, Rob Moretti. Rob, welcome. Hey, Steve. How are you doing today? I'm great. So thanks for joining us today. We're really happy to have you. And what we're here to do today is to discuss LMC TV sports coverage and what it is that we do at LMC TV and how it benefits the community. So let's just start with an overall sort of statement about what it is that we provide the community. Well, LMC TV provides, uh, you know, we cover dozens upon dozens of varsity sports games at Marinick and Rynek High Schools. Um, usually somewhere in the 70s to eight, up to 80 games per year we'll cover uh, across most if not all team sports uh, and full games and then we also uh, will we'll cut highlights and put plays of the week up on on our social media to highlight some of the great plays that our local athletes have made. Uh, we to execute these shoots we hire um, we hire a lot of local youth and local aspiring professionals. Right, so to that point, obviously mm -hmm. as indispensable as you are to the program and the programming, um, who is it really that constitutes the overall sports department? Well, I'm full-time at LMC TV, and then uh, everyone else is uh, hired as a part-timer. So we have announcers and, and we have camera people, and they're the ones who are out there uh, framing the shots and, and commentating the action and uh, it's really a great opportunity for, as I said, young people in the area to get experience in the field. It's, it, sports is a tough field to crack professionally, so any ex experience that you can get, that you can put a reel together, it's, it's going to give you a leg up on the competition. So that includes not only students in the area, not just within the Mamaroneck school system, but the Rye Neck school system, and we even use neighboring schools as well, correct? Neighboring schools, uh, neighboring colleges, uh, Iona students come to us very often uh, for on-air work especially, uh, and even just uh, people who live somewhat nearby in the area and want experience either in front of the camera or behind it. There are people that, that will consider hiring. So aspiring professionals. Exactly. Uh, college graduates or Certainly. anything of that age group, right? Mm -hmm. and, and even older people can too if they're, if they're looking to switch careers or if they're interested in, uh, in trying out something new and uh, they've shown that they are capable of handling uh, either a camera or, or a broadcast, then we consider them as well. Fantastic. Now, um, getting into the more granular element of how you put the programming together, uh, to borrow from a sports phrase, inside baseball. Um, how is it that you determine the schedule? That's a great question. And the schedule, I'd like to think of it as a puzzle. So what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to pick the games that are going to be the most competitive, that are going to be the most hard fought, that are going to make good television. So what I do is before each athletic season, I have a meeting with the athletic departments at the two schools. We review which opponents on their schedules are going to be uh, the most competitive. Right, expected to be the most competitive. Right. And then, uh, then I go into my, into my cave <laughs> and I try to resolve that with these two games are happening at the same time and we really can't do that. Uh, and we can only cover so many games in a given week. 
So um, now, having said that, with more participation, we have had multiple game shoots at the same time from time to time. It's been done. It's more of a special case. Uh, I know in this past spring there were two playoff games going on at Maranek High School at the same time in two different sports, and we were luckily able to both get enough crew together and uh, reserve enough of our uh, spare cameras to make that shoot happen. Uh, but normally, uh, I wouldn't plan to do it. Right. Um, playoffs are a special case where we do try to cover as many games as we can. But in, in the more general sense, we try and give as much coverage and you know, professional coverage quality to each game that we broadcast. Oh, absolutely. Say. Right. Did you know that if you missed the last government meeting, you can watch it on our website. Just go to lmctv.org click on videos, then click on municipal meetings, scroll down to find the meeting you want, or use the search function in the upper right corner and type in the name or date of the meeting. Then watch. You can see the full agenda and jump to a specific agenda item. It's all a click away at lmctv.org. So I'm curious, Rob, I've been with the program for several years now. Um, where did it get its start within LMCTV and how long have you been with the program? Uh, well, the, the program started back in the fall of 2008 as a pilot program. Based off of? Based off, originally off of um, uh, the, the Maranek baseball team winning the state championship that previous uh, spring. And uh, the, the local community wanted, you know, that kind of spurred them to want uh, sports coverage. So they went to LMC TV and uh, budgets had to be approved and all that. And they hired Seth Rothman to head the entire operation and then I was one of Seth's first part-time hires. Uh, the first game was Mamaronek's homecoming game in September 2008 and then uh, they did a select number of games throughout that school year uh, culminating in another state championship uh, baseball run from Mamaronek so and we were up in Binghamton for that uh, and then from there it was a, a full program after that it was approved to continue so uh, we've been running with that ever since. And Seth is now at the Yes Network. He is. He's, so. uh, he's jumped onto the uh, professional ranks. Right. And he's, he's doing a tremendous job there. And, and we miss him, but we see him once in a while. Yeah. Uh, and I came on uh, full time in 2012. So uh, I've been here since. Now, obviously, it's pretty clear what kind of service is provided to the community. What impact do you really feel it has on the overall community? Uh, well, I think that has a great impact, and you have to look at it in a number of different ways. Not only are local youth getting uh, experience in this field, but athletes are, the local athletes are getting more coverage. Uh, they're getting uh, online videos they can share wherever they want. Right, uh, for their own highlight reels to absolutely. be able to, to show. show the colleges. Exactly. For example, we've had a number of athletes uh, asked to use our footage in college reels to show to prospective coaches. Uh, parents who maybe can't make it to a game have a chance to see the game. Uh, other relatives, uncles, aunts, grandparents who live far away, they can watch the game on our website whenever they want. So uh, kind of bring them here when they can't physically be here. Uh, so a tremendous impact, yeah. And then fans you know, can see as well. So games are broadcast on YouTube and available in high definition. Correct. And they are broadcast on our local access channels, which we are actually petitioning to try and get in high definition as well. Right. Right now we're in standard definition on your TV screen, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, online we're, we're in high definition. So whether it's uh, whether you're watching us on demand on our website or uh, also on our website, if you click a link, uh, there's links down uh, below the main uh, rotator to watch all of our channels live in high definition. So if the game happens to be on, if it's the weekend, usually you can watch right there and it'll still be in HD. So it won't be on demand. Last but certainly not least is what the future holds for LMC TV Varsity Sports and where we've gone in recent past and where we're going in the future. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the next thing we're trying to build towards is more live production. Uh, we were able to broadcast that one playoff game live. I was right. honored enough to be on the call for that one. Right. We weren't technically supposed to do that, but we, we got away with it Shh. without uh, any terrible ramifications. Right. Um, but the, the, the future is in live streaming, so that's something that we are uh, exploring. Uh, LMC TV is in the process of evaluating getting a production van. Uh, so down the line, if we were to get a production van, we'd be able to bring that out. 
uh, not only uh, to pump out the game live on TV and online, uh, but also to cut down on workflow and do all of the switching uh, live as the game is happening. So and increase the production quality of the game that would be absolutely broadcast yeah. graphics, live. graphics and, and replays, yeah. which we do right now as well, but I do those in uh, post production. In post production. Instead yes. of doing that, I could spend more time on production, less time on post production, and possibly even be able to cover more games that way. So it is a fantastic resource for the community. It's been a great opportunity for me to get back into broadcasting. I'm very grateful to LMC TV Sports and LMC TV in general for all the things that I've been able to do here and grateful to Rob for hiring me um, and really happy to be a part of the program. Is there anything more that you wanted to share? Uh, if anyone wants to become involved, if it's something that you think you want to do, uh, you, can, you can contact us. Uh, my email is R M O R E T T I. that's my last name, Rob Moretti, at lmctv.org. And, uh, you know, make your pitch to me. Let me know why you, want to, uh, why you want to join the team and what you think you can bring. So that'll do it here with the sports segment, I suppose you could say, in our roundtable discussion with Rob Moretti. I'm Steve Anastas for The Local Live. Now back to you. Staying on topic with sports, Reinick opened the week in the third spot in the New York State Class B Boys Soccer Rankings and on a four-game winning streak. Looking to keep the good times rolling, Spencer Goldberg finished a great kick by John Casas in the LMC Varsity Sports Play of the Week. Inbound for the Panthers. This one is inbounded to Casas. And this one is headed in, and it's a goal for the Panthers. Number seven, Spencer Goldberg. So this whole time, the Panthers were looking for a crease. They got it in off the inbound. A good kick and a great hitter by Goldberg as he gets one through the net. One nothing, Panthers lead. I'm a reporter, I'm a producer, I'm a writer. I am a news anchor, I am a producer. I am a news editor. I am the technical director. I am a reporter, I am an anchor. I volunteer for the local live because I'm a proud resident of Larchmont and Mamaroneck and I like to give back to the community. I volunteer for the local live because I believe in bringing the news into your living room. I volunteer for The Local Live because I believe in leadership, support, and success in a community. I volunteer at The Local Live because it's a fun learning experience and I know each week I come I can learn something new. I volunteer for The Local Live because I believe in community television. As a spring intern at The Local Live, I learned new skills like video, editing, and production and furthered my skills as a writer. The internship gave me confidence as I embarked on my journey through the world of journalism. We are the local live. 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 Our visit to the Canise Barnes Fine Art Gallery to learn more about Larchmont's Arts Festival on Saturday, September 29th from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. is in the spotlight. This is our 17th year. We began in 2002 with about two dozen artists in Willow Park, and we've expanded to 100 artists this year. And this is Kenise Barnes. Uh, she has a gallery in Larchmont, and uh, she judges um, the artwork that is in contention for our uh, $500 prize. She sponsors this uh, along with Julia B. Fee Sotheby's in Larchmont. I think uh, five years ago the gallery was uh, sponsored it solely and uh, the prize is really about you know recognizing someone uh, someone's talent whether they're young and emerging or more experienced and have come to the arts festival many years or for the first time it's really uh, just based on um, potential and uh, 
giving the award, the $500, is now split between Julie B. Fee, Sotheby's, and the gallery because they're my neighbors across the street and uh, they wanted to get invite, involved and I thought it was a great idea and we have lots of uh, uh, things in common. And this year we do have a featured artist as we have in past years. This year's featured artist is Laura Ivanovic and we are uh, in front of some of her work here. Um, these are oil paintings and uh, in Laura's work she uh, is uh, striving for a balance between uh, structure and uh, painterliness. Um, she does a lot of drawings before, architectural drawings, before she starts in on her painting. Um, and she will be at the festival and she can talk to you about her work in person and you can see her work in person. Um, it was the, I think it was the brainchild of Palmer Davis and Karen Osterberg. Karen, yeah. And um, they uh, just wanted a, a grassroots festival to celebrate art and um, to bring it, make it available to the people in, in Larchmont who um, may not be ready to be, collect, uh, you know, some really important works that, that Kenise might have, but to have, uh, to get to know their neighbors who are artists. And that's what I say to people, to uh, come out and be, exhibit your work, and you, find, and you find your neighbors here that you didn't know that they were artists. And, and Palmer's a, a very accomplished fine photographer, fine art photographer, and teaches, and is you know, very involved in nurturing creativity, has given um, classes both in the city and locally. And Karen's a writer, um, so a creative person, and an art collector, so you know, they're very uh, invested in, in the arts personally. As well. One of the cool things you can do at LMC TV is make your own movie like Dead Air, a short horror film coming soon. Producers Matt Sullivan, Chris Lavinia, and Dina Schumacher bring you this Badlands production where one Halloween night a radio DJ decides to play a prank on his listeners not knowing just how powerful airwaves can be. For more information, visit Dead Air's Facebook page on your screen now. Turn on, tune in, drop dead. Welcoming Week nationwide from September 14 to 23rd brings together immigrants, refugees, and native-born residents with the aim of creating more welcoming communities. They were more than 700 welcoming events across the country, including one hosted by St. John's Lutheran Church in Mamaroneck and Hearts and Homes for Refugees. Hearts and Homes for Refugees, a refugee resettlement organization, is hosting an event here at St. John's Lutheran Church in Mamaroneck. Refugee Sunday, a community lunch and day of action. Refugee Sunday was an event aimed at helping Mamaroneck residents become more active in helping refugees and asylees. Speakers included public officials, organizational leaders, as well as stories from those who were affected by these policies. To top it off, Village Mayor Tom Murphy wrote a proclamation to make the week of September 16th to the 23rd Refugee Week. The church was also surrounded by tables in which people can go to get more involved with the cause. I spoke with Hearts and Homes for Refugees program officer Amy Robertson to find out more on what the organization is about. Okay, so aside from the resettling of refugees, what, what does your organization do to actually help them become more acclimated with you know, American lifestyle and culture? Yeah, so that's actually really the specialty of these small grassroots organizations like Hearts and Homes for Refugees. They are, refugees are brought in and go through the official resettlement process with the help of one of the major state, de U.S. Uh, Department of State designated resettlement agencies like Catholic Charities and HIAS who are our partners here. And then what we do is the day-to-day -day of taking people to their appointments, helping them to learn English, learn how to drive, um, how to navigate the school system, the healthcare system. So it's a way of helping people to tr really integrate. And we step up and, and help people to feel welcome and integrated. The goal at the micro level is to help people feel welcome and integrated. And the macro level, it's to really turn back to um, the policies that the U.S. has had since the modern refugee policies were put in place in 1980 with the Refugee Act, which is a, a, a welcoming people who are fleeing persecution and violence or have a fear of persecution and violence. As we can see, Westchester County is putting a foot forward into welcoming refugees to the United States. However, the fight does not stop here. For The Local Live, I'm Robert Baez. 
Larchmont and Mamaroneck Town celebrated a year of food composting at the Larchmont Down to Earth Market last Saturday. The two municipalities earned an ECHO Award from Westchester County and composted close to 50 tons of food waste with the participation of more than 500 resident families. Hello, today we are here at the Down to Earth Farmers Market here in Larchmont, New York on the first day of fall and we are surrounded by a community passionate about composting, culture and culinary delights. Foodies and farmers alike have gathered at the Larchmont Metro North parking lot turned local market, all in celebration of the one year anniversary of the community's composting initiative. In place of cars, corn husks, green beans and carrots have taken over the parking lot, with volunteers like Karen Kaur teaming up to promote locally sourced food and the importance of eliminating its waste. And what does it mean to you to have that zero waste policy? Um, it's, um, it's unbelievable. I just, I, I, you know, I'm so amazed and I'm incredibly grateful that this has happened, that we've got this collaboration with, um, you know, the village uh, mayor and town supervisor, that we've got houses of worship, schools, we've got all the community members involved. And over 120 volunteers have been involved in this in one way or the other in the past year. And that to me is amazing. So it tells you the kind of community support for this. In an effort to further raise awareness of food composting, Town Supervisor Nancy Seligson and Larchmont Mayor Lorraine Walt share their thoughts on what this program means to them. It's very exciting to be celebrating the first year anniversary of our food waste composting program. We're really proud of it. It's been an incredibly popular program and I couldn't have done it without these two women here. Right away we thought it was a great idea. It was, uh, you know, sustainable. We're, we're all about trying to get to a zero waste community uh, if possible. Of course, it all relies mostly on the volunteers because it was really easy. All we had to do was say yes. But then we had to find people in the community who were dedicated and who would volunteer and get the whole thing up and running. In just one year, Larchmont's composting program has removed over 50 tons of food from the community's waste stream by turning it into nutrient compost, inspiring families like David and his sons to also do their part. It's actually not my first time composting. I'm a failed backyard composter who've tried for a year. I've given up, I'm apparently terrible at it, so I'm participating in the community composting program. I'm hoping to see Mamaronic and Larchmont make this mandatory. I'd like to see everybody participate and hopefully avoid extra food waste. How do you feel about being here today with your dad, helping him out composting? When I learn about compost, I feel really good. I just want to just do more and more and more. And what could be the next steps for this composting community? The, the sky's the limit. We're going to expand the program. Ultimately, we really need to reduce how much um, trash and even recycling we're putting into the, um, the system. We want to be sustainable. This has been Aurora Folks reporting for The Local Live. The fundraising drive around a mural in our town center studio continues. We plan to use the funds towards a production van, which will give LMCTV the ability to broadcast community events, live on location, and more. Thank you to all who have donated. The mural still missing some pieces. Individuals as well as groups can help by visiting lmctv.org slash community mural. I would like to thank local artist Jamie Lynn at Maid, an art studio in Mamaroneck, for creating a beautiful community mural. Place your piece in this mural by contributing to LMC TV, the community connection that brings you local board meetings, varsity sports, and your local news. Please contribute to this community mural by going to our website and clicking on Donate. Each contributor will be listed next to the mural when it's complete. We value your appreciation of what we do. Become a single donor or as a group, go to lmctv.org. The only piece missing is you. Picking up from Refugee Sunday, Larchmont's Neighbors for Refugees is hosting a postcard writing event at Voracious Reader on Friday, September 28th from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. This is a chance to let your elected officials know your thoughts on refugees and immigration. The Community Resource Center in Mamaroneck will host a food drive offering free fruits and vegetables open to all. The drive will be at the Open Door Mamaroneck on Saturday, September 29, from 12 to 2 p.m. STEM Alliance is celebrating five years and beyond on Saturday, September 29, at 7 p.m. at the Director Chips Yards in Mamaroneck. Come ready to relax as there will be food, drinks, a live auction, and fun games. This is an adult night out where you can act like a kid. 
Visit lmstemalliance.org for more information. Increase Westchester Disability Community's impact by registering to vote this Saturday, September 29, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Westchester Board of Elections in White Plains. There will be a mock election workshop with guest speakers, giveaways, and refreshments. Everybody has until Thursday, October 12th to register to vote if they have not done so. For more information and to register for Saturday's event, visit wdom.org or you can also call 914-968-4717 or 914-995-5707. Westchester SCORE will hold a free workshop titled How to Grow Your Cells at the Mamaroneck Diner on Thursday, October 4th at 8 a.m. The event is sponsored by the Mamaroneck Chamber of Commerce. For more information and to register, visit westchester.score.org. In our continuing effort to be your community media center, you can now reserve time and space to record a podcast. LMC TV staff have just launched their own LMC cast. Have a listen at lmctv.org slash podcast. And now look out for the third episode coming soon. You can also learn how we can help you produce your very own show. We'd like to say thank you to those of you who have expressed interest in this exciting and growing medium. We love hearing from our viewers, emails, comments, inquiries, and even news tips, pictures, and videos to the local life at lmctv.org. Remember, if you ever miss Thursday's live broadcast, you can catch replays of the local live twice a day on this channel, plus find story clips on our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching the local live. I'm Sebastian Hall, and we'll see you next week. Have a good night.